Bob McAdoo has been, or Ben McAdoo. Motherfucker's name, Ben? Pan the people. What up? What's going on? You're watching Panthers Post with Phil Perkins. Thanks for joining. If you're new here, make sure to pound and keep pounding that like and subscribe button. And if you've already pounded on subscribe, don't keep pounding on it, I guess, just because then you don't subscribe. But just pound it and then keep pounding the keyboard in the comment community because they're still... Despite the fact that the NFL season has been over for two weeks now, or at least if you're a Panthers fan, seven weeks, uh, there's a lot to talk about still with this team. And I feel like it's not going to ever be over because this team just never ceases to keep us entertained. Multiple reports now confirming that the Carolina Panthers are going to be anointing Ben McAdoo as the team's new offensive coordinator. That's right, Ben McAdoo, Mr. Oversized Suit, Slick Rick, should have been in a velour suit, ex-New York Giants head coach Bob McAdoo to be their new offensive coordinator. Now, if you checked out my last video, which very few people did, and that's totally fine, I've learned my lesson. I thought I'd talk about the NFL playoffs in general and maybe point out some guys who I thought could be future Panthers and Jimmy Garoppolo or how they can use DJ Moore like Debo Samuel. I've learned my lesson. I'm just going to keep pounding that Carolina Panthers content in the last video that people in power who at this point, and I stress this point, Matt Rule, people in that type of position like to hire themselves. Someone who like, someone who reminds them of them. Now, Matt Rule has said in the past after he let go Joe Brady as the offensive coordinator that, you know, he kind of took a risk in picking up Joe Brady, the wonder kid out of LSU who has never had any play calling experience, has only been a, a you know a passing coordinator with LSU Tigers, never been in the NFL uh, on the coaching level, on the offensive coordinator or head coach. And so now he reverted back to kind of who he is. And now he picked up his best friend as the interim OC and Jeff Nixon. And now he's going back to a more familiar face, someone who is also makes him feel more comfortable. And that is someone like Ben McAdoo, who, sure, aesthetically, they both kind of look like used car salesmen out of Jersey, but... At the same time, they both come from the Tom Coughlin tree. Uh, ben McAdoo, unlike Matt Rule, and this is a big priority uh, for Rule and Fitter and Co., that they wanted to find someone who, unlike Joe Brady, uh, has coached in the NFL as an offensive coordinator or as a head coach. And if you look at the guys who seem to be in advanced talks uh, with uh, Coach Rule, it really seems to be really a two-horse race in Ben McAdoo and, uh, and Jay Gruden. But... It ended up being McAdoo, who, again, a bit more closer ties to to rule with that Tom Coughlin tree. Now, according to Joe Person, who, congratulations to him, has been anointed as the best sports journalist uh, in North Carolina, according to the National Sports Writers Association, shouts to him. He wrote an article kind of backing up the hiring of Ben McAdoo, saying that he was the best the Panthers could have hoped for. And as I mentioned... Matt Rule said at the end of the year that in their search for the office of coordinator, they want someone with... Play calling experience in the NFL because, as we all know, for a, quite a while now, that the Panthers' third quarter adjustments just suck ass. Suck ass. And preferably if they could find someone uh, who used to be a head coach. And that's exactly what Ben McAdoo was. And, hey, <laughs> we're judging someone by how they look right now. You can see it on Twitter. You know, people making fun of his hair. People making fun of his complete fashion change to try to fit in with the, you know, the uh, the brutal New York media. And yeah, he's a funny looking dude. Sure. He, he looks like a bully that from, you know, started in the sandlot and grew up and he kind of still looks the same. Fine. But, all right, now I'm not a Ben McAdoo aficionado, uh, but people who cover football for a living, like Joe Person, say right here, based on his history, he could be the best option for the Panthers. All right. So it's also still, you know, January 2022. The combine hasn't even happened yet. Still have Sam Darnold as a starting quarterback, but more on that, in, in, including somehow Ben McAdoo. But Ben McAdoo does have somewhat of a pedigree. He has been a QB coach in the NFL for quite some time, working with the likes of Aaron Rodgers and Eli Manning. When he was the head coach of the New York Giants, uh, he started. 11 and 6 in his first year, already better than Matt Rule, made it to the playoffs. He did have the likes of Hall of Famers like Eli Manning, and if you want to call him that, uh, Odell Beckham. They went to the playoffs, and the next year, they won only two games. And they're, they're much uh, talked about, especially in the New York media, benching of Hall of Famer Eli Manning for Geno Smith. And so, hey, 
he he has history at least. At least he's been in the in the thick of it. He's been in the NFC East, the most covered, overcovered, if you want to talk about that division in the NFL. So he's he's used to pressure. He's he he literally was the head coach of the New York Giants, the largest media market in the country. And he, while it didn't last very long, you know, he he's part of this co- continuous turnover uh, of coaches in the Big Apple or Jersey, if you want to get specific. Um, but he's been there before, and that could help. Once the season starts, you would hope. The Wright Report went back. They went back and they, they checked those receipts. And there's a report out there that during the draft that included the likes of Patrick Mahomes, Ben McAdoo was mad pissed that they did not act like the Chiefs did and trade up to get the signal caller out of Texas Tech. According to this article that Roy Riot uh, Report has then retweeted and shared, and you definitely have to check it out. So it says, per ESPN New York's Anita Marks, the Giants... Tried to trade up to select Mahomes because head coach Ben McAdoo, quote, loves him and was very upset when they weren't able to land him. To compare with that draft class, the Chicago Bears didn't rate Patrick Mahomes. They drafted Mitchell Trubisky. Friggin' the New York Jets drafted Jamal Adams, now with the Seattle Seahawks. San Francisco 49ers, Solomon Thomas, not with the team. Jacksonville Jaguars, they drafted Leonard Fournette, not with the team. Tennessee Titans, Corey Davis in the playoffs. All right. Los Angeles Chargers, Mike Williams. You can say what you want. You pick a wide receiver in top 10. Look where he is. He's not amazing. Carolina Panthers, Christian McCaffrey has only played 10 games in two years. All these teams, including the Panthers, had an opportunity to pick up Patrick Mahomes. But they didn't see the talent like our new awesome offensive coordinator, Ben McAdoo, did at the time. Sam Darnold, after the New York Jets traded. This is what Ben McAdoo had to say about Sam Darnold after he was picked Third overall in that draft. He said, quote, and this is from the Riot Report. This is, they, they retweeted these articles. He said, quote, I think he's special. He's obviously a talented guy. He can make plays with his feet, which we've seen. I just have a hard time drafting a guy in the first round where you don't necessarily like the way he throws. He goes on to say, the quarterback, his number one job is to pass the football. If I don't like the way he throws the ball, I have a hard time picking him, right? He then kind of gives his ranking on that 2018 draft. He, he ranks Josh Allen, who is... Still a starter, possibly an MVP candidate, going into the playoffs, heading into the divisional round in Kansas City against another Ben McAdoo favorite in the aforementioned Patrick Mahomes. But he rated Josh Allen as the number one ranked quarterback in that draft. And then Lamar Jackson, who was picked way down in that draft. Everyone had an opportunity to pick up Lamar Jackson. Didn't do it. Then he ranked Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, who's not in the league, Mason Rudolph, whatever, and Baker Mayfield way down low. He said Baker... Has the has the attitude, that's for damn sure. But he said for a quarterback that is primarily should be a passing quarterback, he's too short and too small of hands. So he rated him dead last. And as we remember, in that draft, Baker Mayfield was picked first overall by the Cleveland Browns. And now, you know, four years later, there's talk that they're trying to get rid of him, and then maybe the Carolina Panthers pick him up. Well, while Sam, while while Matt Rule has the final say on the 53 man roster, if Ben McAdoo's in that room. You could better believe that Ben McAdoo, A, will not accept picking up Baker Mayfield for how he rates him in these articles. And two, if he is going to try to coach up Sam Darnold, according to this article, he says about his throwing motion that he can overcome it. Guys have, but that's something that's a challenge for me. I'm going to be looking at that, trying to fix it because it's a fundamental flaw and I believe in the fundamentals. All right, so you're just trying to read in between the lines there. So he's not going to get Patrick Mahomes, obviously. He believes that Sam Darnold is someone who has fundamental flaws. And we still see that as he's entering his fifth year in the league. So you're having a guy in Bob McAdoo, who's, Ben McAdoo, who's going to be coaching this quarterback. If he thinks that's going to be a challenge and not even worth it at this point, because the guy, again, is a veteran, despite what we hear from Matt Rule and Scott Fitter, that Sam Darnold is a young quarterback still. He's not. He's turning 25 in freaking June. Ben McAdoo could be saying, you're a lost cause, bro. You're going to be taking these reps on the bench. And who could he be focusing on? Not Baker Mayfield. If he comes available, I'm sure he's going to be pounding the table, potentially, that do not pick this guy up. Lamar Jackson, not going to be available for the Carolina Panthers to draft. Josh Allen, definitely not. And then all the other guys, not going to be in the league. So, when you talk about and you read that he's all about fundamentals, who is a quarterback out there right now, whether it's in free agency or someone who's available in, in, in the draft, 
or someone for trade that has those fundamentals. Derek Carr could be a guy with the fundamentals. I don't personally, I'm not a quarterback's coach. I feel uncomfortable with the way he throws. Uh, Aaron Rodgers obviously could be available via trade. Doesn't seem like he's going to be the right guy. Deshaun Watson looks like he is destined, according to some reports, to be linking out with Brian Flores, who apparently he's talking to daily and heading up to the Big Apple to play for the New York Giants to rehab his image if it gets that opportunity. And when it comes to Russell Wilson, he's a guy who has great fundamentals. He could be available. That could be an interesting partnership. And then you have in the draft. Who is the one quarterback that seems to be the most pro-ready in this draft who could kind of be a plop starter in the NFL? It's not Sam Howell. He's kind of like a Baker Mayfield clone. So Ben McAdoo necessarily, if he had this choice, probably wouldn't pick him up. Malik Willis, another project guy. Not the greatest fundamentals. Could need some coaching. Super, super, super high ceiling. Desmond Ritter, kind of the same situation. Apparently, he's got a pretty good throwing arm. I haven't really gotten too much into the scouting of these quarterbacks yet. But there's one quarterback... I know you're probably already yelling at your screen already. Kenny freaking Pickett. What is he, a five-year starter, a five-year player out of University of Pittsburgh. He's got the fundamentals. He's got the poise in the pocket. He's got the accuracy. Oh, and as we mentioned before, people like to hire themselves or someone reminds them of them. Matt Rule was, at one point, head coach of Temple. Uh, Kenny Pickett committed to Temple, ended up going to Pitt. There's that connection there. So that is definitely a possibility that he could become new Carolina Panthers quarterback. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about the hiring of Ben McAdoo. I understand if you look at the aesthetics, not inspiring. And the fans were right when they picked up Sam Darnold, not inspiring. And it ended up playing out exactly how we thought. But let me know. Once you actually delve deep into the man, the coach, are you actually pissed? Or are you thinking... Dang, he might actually be good enough that he might actually keep Matt Rule around. And we're just going to continue this trail of five win seasons. CBS Sports, Jason Lackenfora, who's been kind of continually beating the drum that, you know, Dave Tepper is a billionaire for being a risk taker, for being, a, you know, making calculated risks, but also not getting embarrassed. And, you know, putting his balls on the table uh, and taking a gamble like he did with Matt Rule. Uh, so he's kind of been a, a, a proponent, a, a factor, a part of the narrative that Matt Rule necessarily isn't longed for the Carolina Panthers. And his recent report that he dropped today after we just announced or we hear, we're hearing that the Panthers are picking up Ben McAdoo as the offensive coordinator that uh, if one Jim Harbaugh, the current head coach of the Michigan Wolverines, were to leave the Wolverines after beating Ohio State once and making it to a, uh, you know the college football playoff, if he bounces to the NFL, whether it's with the Raiders or some are saying the Bears, probably not the Panthers, that Matt Rule would be very interested in taking that job. What direction would the Panthers go in if that were to happen? If Matt Rule were to bounce, you know, take something that's a bit more secure, take something that's a bit more his speed, where he has full control and, you know, he's dealing with 17, 18, 19 year olds and not, you know, 25, 30 year olds who are making millions of dollars. Not saying that college football players aren't making that anymore, or right now they definitely are. Um, but is that more his speed Go, going back to the college ranks? And also, as we're seeing, just taking a look at the NFL coaching carousel, no head coaches have been hired at this point. It's all just been interviews, lots of interviews. I'm sure there's a lot of guys waiting uh, for some playoff teams to have uh, some time off. I know Eric Bieniemy just uh, interviewed with the Denver Broncos for their new head coaching position. And so no one's actually been firmly put into these open vacancies with the other NFL teams. So it's not like the Panthers are really behind it right now. And so it's still not an unattractive job. If you have someone like Scott Fitterer who is going to be picking his coach, if it, if, it, if it ended up being like this, he'd be picking this new head coach and they can work together and they can work on a plan in terms of the quarterback position that they, this new head coach can kind of kind of have his have his pick, have his choice on who he wants under center. So anyways, that was the article from Jason Lockenford. Let me know how you feel about that. We're kind of being dragged along here. Do you just want to rip that Band-Aid off and just get back into the search? Tell Ben McAdoo to, to beat it? You know, don't sell your house just yet. Um, and you, you want Matt Rule gone? And you want to get on that coaching carousel and start these interviews right now? Uh, let me know. Or do you want to see this thing through? Do you think, you think Matt Rule, at the end of the day, deserves that third year and best case scenario 
we suck again. Top five pick. You get your choice of Bryce Young or CJ Stroud or whoever, you know, shows up in the upcoming college football season. Let me know in the comments below. That was a quick one. I'm going to see you guys next week. I appreciate you. Make sure to like, subscribe, spread the word. Talk to you soon.